All right, let's start off with our first big story this morning. We told you that the student's vice principal and the teacher kidnapped in a queer area of Lagos, uh, fortunately, have been released. Uh, the Lagos State Police Commissioner <laughs> confirmed this. Thank uh, God well. for that. The yeah. abductors had last Thursday stormed the school during its assembly and abducted uh, the vice principal, a teacher, and four students. They were kidnapped by gunmen at Igbonla Model College, Ekwe, in Lagos State. Upon arrival, it was noticed that the school had been literally invaded by worried parents who arrived immediately news of the kidnap broke. Some of the parents made frantic efforts to reach other parents who we gathered reside outside the state. This was the hall where the adoption took place at about 8 a.m. It's now swarming with worried parents and guardians. Here, the Lagos State Government representatives and the school authorities are trying to pacify the visibly shaken parents. Though we were not allowed to record the proceedings, the parents told us their demand. The first thing in sight of my kids, I saw them, they are fine. Now the issue is, we have some officials from the state government. They are telling us that they won't allow us to take our kids soon. And we are saying no, these children are traumatized, these children are devastated, they are shocked. I want to take them home and talk to them. And I want to know, are the students completed? A question. Are they completed, the students? It's a question. But if they are completed, then uh, how are we going to assure that the governor is aware of this matter? Then before we go home, are we leaving the children to whom? We need to evacuate the children from this school. Then within from Nanti on Monday, they should face the security intact. If we are to release our children here tonight, they must assure us that there will be enough security for these children. So let me take my son home and treat him, please. Eh? They took him and he escaped from them. And the way he jumped back to, uh, to this uh, uh, fence, from the fence, he wounded in his mouth. So I want to take him home and go and treat him. When he, things like this happen, uh, we must not allow our emotion to override us. So what we are doing as a government and as a people is to try to ensure that we strengthen um, the belief of and uh, try to build the confidence of the children that are affected. Though some of the parents were lucky to see their children, some weren't that lucky. They searched, they searched inside the bush, but it's nowhere to be found. This woman was the first person the kidnappers met with when they arrived to the school. She says she had never seen anything like that in her entire life. When they pass, I don't know that there's the kidnapper. So they just hold my hand and they beat me with cutlass for back. So they push me that I should take them to principal by force. So immediately Right, thankfully, the kidnapped victims have been uh, since found and they've reunited with their families. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, Commissioner of Police, Lagos State, Fatai Wusheni, who will be speaking with us on the phone. And we're still, like, of course, expecting your security expert, Tanwa Ashiru, uh, to join us to look at this. Good morning to you, uh, Honorable Commissioner of Police. Yeah, good morning. Yes, uh, thanks for joining us on the show this morning. Uh, Yes, it, it, it's really a cause for worry now. This uh, case of kidnapping seems to be uh, rising, you know, and very damning uh, dimensions to the issue of kidnapping. What would you say is, is the cause of this? Uh, what's happening with uh, proactive security in nipping kidnapping in the bud in Lagos State and indeed other parts of the country? Whatever is the cause of crime um, globally, uh, should also be the cause of committing crime in Nigeria. And um, you have said it's alarming. Um, this is uh, probably the second case of kidnapping we are having in the school. It's not as if it happens every day. The security agencies are alive to the challenges we are facing at the moment. And of course, we are rising to the occasion. Um, there is no way, no society that is free of crime. You have uh, crime committed um, one way or the other. Uh, but at all times, the security agencies and the Nigeria police that is saddled, um, especially with um, 
uh, keeping the internal security. We've always been um, alive to have responsibilities. And um, copying crime is also um, a duty for everyone. It's not just for the police and the security agencies alone. So it's when all of us partners together, uh, we'll be able to make ourselves safer and more secure. Mm. All right. These are serious times, perhaps serious measures in the must be put in place. Uh, I'll, I'll take you back a bit to the Babinti Macaulay case uh, before the final, the last ad abduction where the students were taken away. There was an attempted adoption where, and, and, and the issue of the, raising their perimeter fence came up. And until that second ad uh, adoption happened, the, 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 fence, the fence were left the way they were until that one happened. My question is, can't the police be involved in some kind of preemptive measure? Do we always just have to call you when we have issues and fire brigade approach is put into place for rescue? You've said it all. That is why we've been doing enlightenment. That is why we've been um, engaging um, the community in discussion. Um, you've said that, uh, the issue of the fence not being high. It is not the police that will go and do a high fence. Um, in those days, before now, um, it is um, uh, considered um, necessary that when you are establishing schools, you should put them in areas that are conducive for learning. But what we tell people now is that when you establish schools, when you establish factories, um, we should uh, all do threat analysis together. Um, let us know how we can support with advice. And that is why I keep on emphasizing that um, security is everybody's business. Making us safer and more secure um, uh, everyone's business. It's not just to be left for the security agents alone. Uh, of course, we, we do appreciate that, that Honorable today. Commissioner, if I may come in. Uh, now that it seems that schools in Lagos are becoming some kind of target for uh, kidnappers, are you having some kind of interface with schools in Lagos, whether at primary or secondary school? And what kind of interface are you having with them? You know, just like Busolami said, a preemptive measure uh, to ensure that this doesn't even happen in the first place because it looks like parents are now losing confidence in the security, uh, you know, apparatus already. Let me first debunk the impression that you said it is rampant. If you had one six or seven months ago and you have another one now, that will not be right to say that it is rampant. That is number one. Number two, the mm. issue of parents losing confidence. We have to do it together. No parent has lost confidence. We've always been alive to have responsibilities. We've been engaging them. We've been interfacing with them. Um, where we need to do preemptive measures, we've been doing it. It is what happens that you hear. For every one incident that is committed, there are other 20 incidents that must have been prevented. Even where you have the most advanced technology, you go to the United States, you go to some other places, you hear that um, gunmen entered schools and killed people, yet we still send our children to school there. So it is not something that we should think is peculiar to Nigeria. Uh, crime is a global thing, except you don't have human beings in a society that will say that crime will not be committed. And that is why we've been engaging everyone. That is one we've been partnering with members of the community. You remember the Inspector General of Police uh, put up the Eminent Personnel Forum, which all the state police commands have launched, which we've taken to the grassroots. But that's um, um, one of the measures that the Nigeria Police has put in place to engage people, to tell them to be security conscious, to raise their security awareness. And when all of us do that, you can be sure that we'll be able to um, reduce crime to the barest minimum. All right. Uh, okay. It's, uh, sorry. Uh, now, is the police even well equipped to actually meet uh, this challenge? Because Nigeria is now uh, the kidnap for ransom capital of the world. The, the, the Nigeria police is more than well equipped. And that is why you see that for any of these incidents, um, the, the criminal elements are gotten, they are prosecuted, and um, of course we've raised the bar. It is a different narrative now. Um, what we just need is what we are doing. This is part of uh, what we are doing now is part of uh, what we make us safer. Enlightenment, um, getting people to be security um, conscious. And when all of us do that, um, we get ourselves uh, more secure.
All right, Mr. Commissioner, just hang on. It's time to go out now on uh, TVC Entertainment. For viewers there, you can continue with the program on DSTV at the Concert Fest. The channel is 190, DSTV 418. You can also go to T Go TV 45 and AC TV 510. TVC Breakfast continues in a moment. Stay with us. Right, uh, welcome back. We're talking at, uh, we're looking at kidnapping, uh, of course, in Lagos and across Nigeria. We have uh, the Commissioner of Police, Lagos State, uh, Fatai Owusheni, speaking with us on the line there, and he's been giving us insights as to this. Uh, now, let me let me just throw this uh, in very quickly. The infiltration of uh, terrorist activities uh, seems to be complicating the whole kidnapping uh, thing. How are you able to, um, you know, differentiate between the influence of terrorists and kidnappers who really just want to make money, apart from wanting to create, you know, terror? Um, I, I didn't get that clearly. Yes, I was asking, you know, the infiltration of uh, terrorists into the whole kidnapping scenario. That seems to be complicating uh, matters in terms of dealing with the rising incidents or spate of um, kidnapping in in nigeria what what do you make of this and how are you planning to you know uh, check this um if i get you 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 are trying to link terrorism with kidnapping yes that seems to be rearing its head oh there are two different things what is defined as terrorism is different from what is uh, described um is uh, defined as um abducting people for ransom um, for each of the crimes, there are um, different strategies that are put in place to address them. But as I've told you, um, the Nigeria police in synergy with all the security agencies, um, we've from time to time reveal our strategy. I've mentioned it before that um, issue of criminal elements with security agencies is like a cat and mouse game. Um, while the 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 the, the mice is uh, trying to perfect the strategy to escape the cat, the, the cat, the cat is also looking for how to uh, get hold of the mice. So it's the same thing with criminal elements and uh, police, and, as well as security agencies. So I, um, as the society grows, you see all sort of uh, uh, things uh, being done by criminal elements. So they, they watch television. They, they, they also study our strategies to say, okay, yes, when I committed this last crime, this is how I was caught. And they go back to download, re-strategize. So also security agencies re-strategize uh, from time to time. All right. Tell us your strategy about kidnapping along the waterways because this is a issue. What are your strategies? This, the, the, the kidnappers seem to be beating you to it every time. I disagree with you. They've not been, as I've told you, the misconception. It's not as if you have, when you say the beat up to it, that is to say that it happens every hour, it happens every day. So we, you, what we've been doing is to strengthen our presence on the waterway. We are lucky in um, Lagos State. We've gotten the support of the state government on, uh, on um, a periodic basis. We look at what we have to police our waterways in synergy with other agencies like the Navy, um, like the, the customs that also have strength on the waterway. And we keep on reviewing this to see where we have gaps. For everything that happens is a lesson is a lesson learned. So we've been increasing our visibility and of course most especially getting our people informed on what they should do and what they should not do. And uh, looking at the activities of kidnappers, you did mention strategy there. It, it looks like, uh, would you say they are actually strategic in their planning and execution? And, uh, you know, in such a way that um, you, you begin to wonder, you know, how, how much intelligence is actually going into the work of kidnappers? Or would you say it's just a kidnap for ransom situation? Uh, like some have said, you know, the joblessness and unemployment is rising and this may be uh, giving rise to uh, kidnapping. How have you been able to profile the kind of kidnapping that's going on right now? 
we have platform um, on which we share information, on which we share intelligence among the security agencies. What you need to do, you need to know is that that is why they call crimes like this organized crime. And when they say that um, a crime is an organized crime, a lot of thoughts are put into it by the people that the, the mere fact of thinking of, oh, if I commit this crime, even if it is a small theft, that if I commit this theft, how am I going to escape the eyes of uh, the police or other security agents? It's a strategy by themselves. So there is no one, just as you plan for your duty, so also criminals, because that is their own um, uh, uh, livelihood, so also they plan. And it is because we profile, we get information, um, we look at modules, we study the modules, and we look at, oh, how do we address this um, new strategy that they are putting in place? There are new methods of committing crime. It is because we put all this together that has been making us to be on top of um, all this situation. You would know that even when the CBN um, uh, governor's wife was created, mm -hmm. immediately after the release, all the criminals were arrested. The, the whatever bids they collected was also recovered. So that is to let you know that the security agencies, the Nigeria police, don't just sleep, um, fold their hands and watch criminal elements uh, have a free reign. So we, we've been re-strategizing from time to time. All and, right. Uh, Okay, uh, you just mentioned the CBN governors' uh, wives are uh, kidnapped. In mm -hmm. that case, there uh, are allegations and reports that some army uh, personnel were involved in, in the kidnapping. Mm -hmm. That brings us them. Yeah, to, mm -hmm. to the issue of sabotage and, and bad eggs among the well, security then, uh, forces, even the Nigerian police itself. What is your take on that? It is unfortunate that we have um, members of security forces uh, get involved in crime. But uh, the first thing you have to know is that they are also human beings. And we've also said that for every 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, there is a Judas Iscariot. Just like we have in homes that won't have everybody behave the same way. It is very, very unfortunate. And each of the security agencies have a means of addressing this, of um, fishing out. That is why we profile our personnel as well of fishing out the criminal elements amongst us and of course we don't fear them whenever things happen like this mm. and of course my next question would be uh, a very obvious one then uh, so what measures do you have in place uh, to ensure that these negative uh, elements or bad elements do not actually find their ways into the uh, police, for example, which is your area of influence and of course other security services. And uh, in, the, in the situation where they actually find their ways into the uh, security uh, apparatus, how do you weed them out? Um, from time to time, I can talk of the Nigeria police. Um, we've always um, gone out. We have um, different units within the police that um, one starting from recruitment, um, profiling, taking a background um, check on them. And while in the service as well, there are different units that look into misconduct, um, that go out to go and uh, uh, find out, uh, look at the lifestyle of uh, officers. And uh, as we discover things, they are addressed. We have um, various disciplinary measures, including when we find out that some of them are involved in uh, crimes that they are also treated as common criminals and prosecuted. Okay, uh, uh, let's uh, take the issue of ransom. Mm. You know the same MFLS case, uh, the, the ransom was paid. The Nigerian police paid ransom to get the woman back. In their defense, they said that's it's just a means to be able to uh, locate those people. But the also told Nigerians not to pay ransom when it comes to kidnapping. Is it a case of uh, what is good for MFLS wife? It's not good for Igbon Lamodia school, for instance. It is right time we keep on talking about ransom when there is any kidnapping case. The more you talk about it, the more you encourage the criminal element because they will think that it is viable, that it can make money. What you call ransom could be what we call big uh, as per security agencies. And when you have um, abduction um, for ransom, you also have to be very careful. They want to jeopardize um, and put the life um, of the victims at risk. So it's, um, it's a strategy that 
we shouldn't be discussing in public like this uh, because when you let out so many things you are also empowering your enemies Mm, indeed. Now, is this another reason for state police or community uh, policing like some experts have been arguing that, you know, with, if, if kidnapping is going to be reduced to the barest minimum, uh, we need to take security to the very, uh, to the lowest level, talking about the community level and the state level? Well, what difference does it make as to um, which state, uh, institution of state is in control of the police? That's a different issue. That is political. I would not have joined issues on that. But what we have now is even more than talking of state police. You have community policing entrenched in this country today. Um, you, you, you must have heard that at different times. We have um, town hall meetings. Um, you have the DCRC, uh, people that volunteer to help the police. And I've mentioned it before. Um, one of the policy thrusts of the Inspector General of Police is the institution of um, eminent personality forum, which was carried to the grassroots. It is to help to, to let people uh, get involved on how they are police, to give us their input, to assess us, to look at the gaps that they've seen in the uh, police, to also look at uh, what they are not doing right. And we put all those things on table together. That is what you call grassroots policing. And mm. that is exactly what the Nigeria police is doing now. Okay, All right. uh, uh, just one more question we'll before to... I let you go. Just okay. one more question. The issue of prosecution. Mm. Uh, those who have been caught right now, mm. we, we, I assume that some people were caught. Uh, what is happening to them? Nigerians want to know what is happening. And of course, the issue of death penalty has been dangled. Your mm. take on that, please, quickly. Mm. Um, that is also uh, for the judiciary. Um, what we do is that as we get them, we are in them before the court. We make sure that we are diligent in our investigation um, so that when we, we are prosecuting, um, we don't get, uh, the, the, uh, get them out based on technicalities. Um, you should also know that the judiciary has its own challenge, but um, it's, um, it's all together the police, the prison, the judiciary, that is the Criminal Justice Administration. And we've been working in synergy to make sure that whatever gaps that would make any criminal uh, to get help, the hook is tightened so that uh, they'll be properly um, sentenced. All right, uh, Fatai Woshini, Honorable Commissioner of Police, Lagos State. It's always a pleasure talking with you uh, on TVC Breakfast. Thanks for your time. Right. Uh, of course, uh, we've since been joined by <laughs> Tanwa Ashiru, a security expert. Uh, it's so nice to have you join us again. Good morning. Nice, nice Good to morning. see you. you. Uh, well, in, in speaking with the Honorable Commissioner, he's been saying that the, the job of securing uh, lives and property cannot really be left uh, to the police alone, that we all, you know, must put uh, or join hands together uh, to ensure that the issue we're talking about this morning, kidnapping, is actually brought to the barest minimum. But what do you think has given rise to this spike in kidnapping in, in Nigeria? Okay, so there's certain measures that are supposed to have been put in place mm -hmm. um, to help prevent this. Now, so far what we see is security agencies are reactive. Things happen mm -hmm. and then they react. Um, but they ought to be a bit more proactive. And how can you be proactive? Mm -hmm. You must keep data. See, um, when you start keeping track and keeping proper data analysis mm. of the people, of the kidnappers, collect their biometrics, be able to trace them, it's very important. And I'll give you an example, mm. for instance. Um, some of the kidnapping that takes place, I know there was one that took place in River State where the Nest Oil, they kidnapped about 14 yes. um, staff members on a bus. A very similar, in fact, identical kidnapping situation had happened along that exact same highway. Um, somehow they didn't find the kidnappers from the first one, two weeks later, or almost three weeks later, the nest oil incident happened. Mm. So when you start keeping track, you start realizing that there are certain specific highways, for instance, in the country where kidnapping is rampant. I know the Abuja Kaduna Highway, mm. um, that's a major one. That's where the uh, former the diplomat, the Sierra Leonean diplomat, diplomat was kidnapped. Was the, yes. That's where um, the former minister, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, also, and her husband yes. was kidnapped. Mm. And then there's also the Benin, that Benin Highway. Mm -hmm. where Emifela's wife was kidnapped and so we see it all the time now let's bring it to Lagos State for instance in Lagos State 
every time the kidnappers, you know, uh, strike and they do it around the outskirts, they do it in areas where you can reach or they're accessible via water. And so mm -hmm. the waterways, we know, is a major, you know, means Means. of escape. So you would think that by now, with the police or the you know, state command keeping track of these things, would have amped up surveillance, you know, monitoring or patrolling across the waterways and the surrounding communities. But we haven't necessarily seen we that We just yet. saw the commissioner on that. And of, my, my word was that the, the kidnappers beat them to it all the time. All mm -hmm. the time. And he says he disagrees with that. And then, let me even tell you what was worse about this particular one with the school in Ekwe. Yes. It happened at 8 a.m. in the morning. Eight in the morning it was bright. I mean, it's not even the last one that happened at Babington actually happened in the evening. Mm -hmm. This was bright and early, and they had time to even some people stayed on the boats, and then the others went in there. This sort of crimes are opportunistic. So in that particular instance, I believe that with the Ibonla, I believe I think that's the Ibonla, yes. Ibonla, mm -hmm. um, that kidnap situation, they had done their recce. They had gone there and they had mm. surveilled the place. They knew that, okay, at this time, at 8 a.m., the law enforcement won't be as heavy in the area. Mm. That would be a good time to strike. The students would be on the field <clears throat> and so on and so forth, sir. And so, you know, that was one of the major things that we've seen with that. And so I just wish that the security agencies would be a little bit more proactive um, in terms of MM. Lego State, it has been doing pretty well, though in terms of being reactive anyway. Reactive. Uh, yes. So the, the, the measure really should be preemptive and uh, mm -hmm. proactive, Absolutely. according mm -hmm. to you. Beyond the gathering of data and surveillance, what else can they do? Okay, so when you, okay. One of the things also that these kidnappers are taking advantage of is um, low presence of law enforcement. And mm -hmm. where do you see these low presence? In certain communities that are somewhat in the South outskirts. South places. Exactly, mm -hmm. and even on the highways. You can go for miles and miles, kilometers and kilometers, and you won't see a single you know policeman or anything mm. on the streets and mm. they take advantage of that one other thing though I really believe that the security agencies need to search within themselves we have seen instances of kidnappers wearing security you know military uniforms carrying out these things and in fact in Emifela's wife's case they, did. they were actually prior military or prior servicemen and so that's one thing that I you know one area I really hope that um, the law enforcement can crack down on which is making sure that their weapons their personnel their uniforms are not getting into the hands of people that would start using them to carry mm. out crime Okay, uh, at this point, let's find out, uh, Tanwa, what the people are saying on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, Fola Dele will be doing that uh, for us. Fola, good morning. Morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Morning. You look nice and colorful. And you too. Good morning, Tanwa. <laughs> oh, okay, let's yes. get into the tweets. First one here from at Yinka Wumi. He's saying, the most lucrative business in Nigeria today is kidnapping. <laughs> and Buhari is, President Buhari is doing almost nothing to curb it. It's his opinion. Uh, next one from at God bless 247. He's saying, I'm not happy about the rising kidnapping in Nigeria, especially that of children. They have damaged those children. Release them now. Hmm. Next one from Hilda. Hilda is saying, immediate trial of corrupt judiciary, yet one million inmates across Nigeria awaiting trial. Kidnapping all day, boy Mephile's wife got out in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> At Guavasuku is saying, why wouldn't investors run away from Nigeria when kidnapping is now a professional job and our security agencies have no system? I would like your reaction to that one, Lita. Mm -hmm. Uh, at Olutswichi20 saying the kidnap of six school children in Ekpe, I don't know where we're heading to in Nigeria. No security of lives. And the last one from at I am David Skills, who's saying it's time for everybody in Nigeria to get a gun. Shoot anybody that tries to kidnap you. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> wonder if that's the way to go. <laughs> yes, I wonder. <laughs> Similarly extreme, but um, the tweet earlier about how the security agencies seem to be doing nothing about it. Okay, so they're actually working at it. And from, from what I've been reading, okay, let me tell you what I believe the tactic or, or the tactic they're using. So they don't encourage the payment of ransom. We understand that. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, and they try, I guess, to track via communications. They're trying to track the kidnappers. Of course, the kidnappers watch Hollywood movies. So they mm -hmm. know that chances are their phone calls are being traced. So they either, one, move around, or they quit, keep uh, switching it off so that they can't necessarily be traced. And so our security force and you know, law enforcement ha have caught on that. And so what they now do is they would allow the family members pay the ransom if, if they want to. I mean, that's fine. And they will pay it. But at the point of payment or at the point of exchange or in recent cases, at the point of the men, the kidnappers, spending 
um, <clears throat> the ransom, then they go ahead and apprehend them. So they are doing something. It's just that they're doing it at the later portion, which is after a kidnapping has so occurred. Done. Yes, mm -hmm. and so that's why I'm saying that if they're able to collect data, if they're able to actually highlight, pinpoint, you know, the, the red spots, the hot spots for kidnapping, and, you know, pouring a bit more effort in those areas in terms of patrolling it and so on and so forth, then that would be, you know, some um, preventive, uh, preventative, preventative measure. Uh, but the measure area seems to change. Oh, for that, to, to that, that last twit about everybody owning gun, a gun. Yeah. <laughs> gun possession. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> I mean, seriously looking at that, with yeah. what's going on in the U.S. now where everybody, you just get angry yeah. and and some and Americans are having to rethink know, about I know. it. And you pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not going to happen. Trust me, it will be a lot worse if, if we're all our, allowed to, you know, have guns. Because think about it, even just on the road driving, I mean, some guy just messes with you, you take out your gun and just We're already aggressive about. enough. I don't exactly. Think having a gun. Um, but what, you know, our fears are is that <laughs> the people who currently are allowed to have guns mm. are the security forces. So when you're seeing weapons in the hands of criminals, it kind of makes you wonder, what's the correlation? How are they getting exactly. this Exactly. In some weapon. cases, we've seen instances of criminals are raiding police stations in some of the mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. other remote parts of the country and then taking out their armory. Um, we've seen some instances, like recently, there was some news articles that came out where they said there were some um, military men who had been providing weapons for Boko Haram. Yeah. We saw that in the news. And so even recently, we're also seeing uh, the police crackdown. I know there was a news um, report that came out yesterday that said they found a, a factory, I guess, where they were illegally mm -hmm. producing military, um, um, military police uh, uniforms, fatigues, yes. you know, and so on and so forth. So they're trying to crack down on that. So even the criminals know they're taking advantage of the, you know, accessibility of weapons of the policemen mm. and so. All right, uh, Fola, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, now, um, Tawa, initially when uh, kidnapping began to rear its head, it used to be expatriates that were the victims. Yes. And all of a sudden, you know, oh, you yeah. and I are at risk. <laughs> oh yeah, the kidnappers realize Nigerians have money too. Hmm. It's a purely uh, for ransom, it's purely of uh, you know pecuniary reasons that's mm. why they're carrying out um, kidnapping here mm. um, of course you have the occasional for rituals but that's a bare you know more of a minimum here so they realize Nigerians to have money or is it um, because we display things, it don't forget that what happened with the Kim Kardashian yeah in Paris yeah in Paris and yeah. the problem was that she had too much display of wealth. Yeah, but is even that here, case? Yeah. you'll find that some of the people they kidnap, they will ask them, say, look, 100 million and release. And they're like, where do you want us to find it? They're kidnapping university pro professors. I know mm -hmm. university professors are not displaying mm. wealth of any kind. I mean, how much do, do um, you know, academia get paid? So it's not necessarily that. It's just for monetary purposes. They're mm. going to squeeze you and get as much as they can get out of you. And I'm just wondering, how random are these activities of kidnappers? I mean, when you have the wife of a, a Mefiele, for example, the mother of a former finance minister, Konjo Iwela, and some high-profile people like that, you, you know, like I asked uh, the commissioner of police, is, are they really strategic in their planning yes. or are this just random uh, cases and it just happens you know that, to be uh, some high profile person that's been kidnapped okay so it's both and i'll tell you the trends that we've seen when you go further down south um southern region mm. of of nigeria you find that the kidnapping tends to happen more of the kidnapping tends to happen at residences when that happens it's been a targeted you know situation mm. so when they come to your school when they come to your location most of those are kind of targeted then you have the occasion usually when it's in transit on the roads they're kind of opportunistic so we have seen instances where it's specifically targeted so when the australians were kidnapped um mm. you know from i think calabar was in cross river yes the lafarge um, em employees mm. And that was somewhat, it was somewhat targeted as well, because they knew they were on their way to work. They knew they took this route all the time. So you do see that in those cases. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the in-transit uh, kidnapping that takes place are opportunistic. For instance, with Emifela's wife, mm -hmm. what they actually did, which is weird, you would think they're traveling with um, security, you know, back up, some kind of deterrent. a deterrent. But in, the, in this instance, it was actually a beacon. They had already caught someone, and then they saw another vehicle come in with you know, um, policemen in there and they figured, oh, it's certainly an important person in here. And they released the other guy and then took her instead. Um, why were they able to do that? They, were, they had um, military background. 
So, you know, in Nigeria, the military believed that they were kind of above the police. Mm. And, and, you know, they felt that they could overpower them, which they did. Um, so that was it, was, it was an opportunistic crime, but it was also targeted in that they saw that she had mobile police and they figured that she was an important person. All right, let's talk about intelligence gathering and the duties of the DSS. Instead of arresting judges, do you think they should concentrate more on this? This is a national security matter. Absolutely. Mm. You see, in the U.S., the FBI tends to handle kidnapping cases. Why? Because it cuts across, most of the time, it cuts across um, state jurisdiction. Mm. And because the FBI has jurisdiction over exactly mm. all the mm. states, so they tend to pick up on kidnapping. And plus, they know it's something that needs to be curbed now because if it's led to spiral out of control, every single person will hop on. It's a lucrative business, like one of the tweets said. Um, and so in the case of DSS, I believe they're somewhat like our version of the FBI. Mm -hmm. You know, they have general jurisdiction, uh, um, widespread nationwide. And yes, they do need to be tracking things like these, things which are trends, things which cut across different states. Um, and they, because they're, you know, the four, I guess, intelligence agencies are supposed to be the ones gathering this data that I said mm -hmm. and looking at these things. And notice that what I just said about the trends, you know, down south versus the trends up north and the, the criteria, the types of people who are carrying out the kidnapping at different parts of the that. country. You know, this is part of what they're supposed to be doing, keeping track of all these things so that at a certain point you can almost predict what is going to happen. And let me tell you something about prediction. Mm -hmm. See, when this um, school kidnap happened recently, I had to give a prediction um, for my clients in the reports that I write. And you know what? Exactly what I said so far is what's taking place, which is number one, the kidnappers came, they've taken the people, they're going to ask for hundreds of millions, okay? Mm -hmm. They're going to, the parents and everybody else is going to come back and say, we don't have hundreds of millions. They're going to renegotiate to tens of millions. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. And then after a while, they will negotiate to an amount which can be paid. The parents will pay for it. They will release the victims. And then later on, the Lagos State Police Command or whoever will find the kidnappers yes. and parade and them. And then it's the same cycle over and over cycle. again. So this is, is based this, on what I know from the news. Is but, this a yeah. time when we really should be uh, looking seriously at community policing? Well, and even state police, you know, that uh, seems not to be uh, what some would like to happen. For state police, I would definitely say yes. I mean, I'm, just, I'm a proponent of state police. I believe that um, nobody can protect the house more than the owner of the house. Um, when you take you know, people who, of this state and you say, you know what, Lagos is us. This is our home. Mm. We're going to do anything and everything to protect the state. And I always use the analogy that how effective do you think it would be if you carry an Ibadan man and you post him <laughs> in Borno and you tell him, well, yeah, start protecting the community. And the guy is like, look on me was my business with the you he know has to familiarize exactly himself with, himself with it you're in unfamiliar terrain and all of that so mm. that's why I really believe in state policing I believe that if if you can pour your resources within your state and have your people from your states take care of that state it will be fantastic now when it comes to community policing mm -hmm. um, definitely it's recommended I mean the police can be everywhere so they are going to need the help the help of the community to um, you know to take care of things However, the relationship that we have with the police right now is not, you know, in the best of, of terms. And I'll tell well, you, I just... They're recently, not just our friends right now. They're, they're really <laughs> not. Let me I just recently got back uh, from Oyo State. And I thought that they had taken away all these roadblocks, mm. right? And of course, we get stopped by the police along the, you know, highway. And, you know, they asked for all the paperwork. In fact, my cousin who was driving, he was so confident because he had all his paperwork down packed. He brought everything out, he showed the guy, do you know the policeman, so one of them came with the phone, he said, this license plate you have is not registered in the system. And so my cousin looked at him like, you're not making any sense. Anyway, eventually, after they just finished checking everything, taking their time, they said, okay, sir, weekend now. <laughs> We're still on that matter. Isn't that the real challenge? And you just touched on something that I'm wondering. Okay. I mean, if we say the roadblocks should be taken out of the highways, and the, it's obvious that the highways are a target, you know, a place where these kidnappers actually thrive. Uh, we seem to be left between the devil and the deep blue sea here. Not necessarily. You know, we're in the 21st century. Mm. They actually really need to start focusing on using technical uh, means of, of... Technology. Exactly, mm. of gathering But we don't have that, do we? In the interim, shouldn't the roadblock remain while you get the, the technology? Well, you ask yourself, how effective are the roadblocks? Are they effective right now? Mm. Not necessarily. So what does that mean? It means that you need to expedite. 
you know, mm -hmm. your acquisition of some form of technical means of patrolling or monitoring the highways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because the, these the roadblock tactic is one that has also started being used even by the kidnappers. So they wear fake police uniforms, mm -hmm. they pose as, as fake policemen, and they mount their own roadblocks. So in essence, what is supposed to be protecting us mm -hmm. is now even the trap upon which, you know, travelers are falling into. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, very quickly, let's even touch on the psychological impact of, you know, uh, on the victims themselves. Is anybody really looking at this seriously? You know, it's it's really messed up. And, and it's interesting because as I, gather the data and I want to know more about the trends and the tactics. I'm also very interested in knowing more about even the victims and how the situation went, what helped them and so on and so forth. Now, I may not be privy to you know most of most of these people. This is where we expect the media is, I guess, to somewhat come in and fill in the gaps and help tell their own side of the story. But a lot of times, the victims don't even want to be out there. They they feel so vulnerable already. They don't want to be you know out in public and so on. So that's understandable. But this is where I would you know also hope that the law enforcement, the police, take the time to get the statements from the victim, not necessarily so that you can tell the world how you know the victim's prayers or so on save them, but so you can get some information on how, what it's like and how one can protect themselves from the situation. Okay, Tanwa Ashir, it's always a pleasure to have you on TVC Breakfast. All right. Uh,